Hello, I'm Jose Pizarro, a Spanish chef in the UK with various restaurants there. And I want to be your guide today here at La Vera. And I want to show you how the pimentón is produced, few recipes and tips. Pimentón de la Vera is the result from milling different dry red peppers. And Pimentón de la Vera is produced here at La Vera, an area in Extremadura, central west of Spain. Pimentón de la Vera has the most beautiful and intense red color, but the main characteristic is that it's a smoke that makes it unique to the rest of the world. Peppers came from America thanks to Christopher Columbus in the 16th century and we are cultivated here in the monastery of Juste thanks to the monks. From the monastery they spread it to the whole area and became one of the main wealth of the region. Thanks to its climate, La Vera, situated here below the Gredo Mountains, is the perfect place to cultivate the peppers. The planting of pepper is in May and the harvest in the beginning of autumn. ¿Qué diferentes variedades tenemos de, de pimientos? Pues aquí en la comarca de La Vera tenemos cuatro variedades, que son Jaranda, Jariza, eh, Bola y Genomí. I just asked him what different varieties we have here in, the, in La Vera of peppers, and it's four, Jaranda, Jarilla, Bola y Genomí. And um, pimentón, different types? Tenemos tres tipos de pimentón, que son agridulce, el dulce y el picante. And it's three different types of pimentón, sweet, bittersweet and hot, but the most popular here in La Vera is the bittersweet. As you know, in La Vera, the weather is lovely and sunny and warm, but autumn are really raining and wet. What happened? We have to dry the peppers. To dry the peppers, they make a bonfire inside of these houses until the pepper get the proper dehydration. The wood they use is from acorns and oak. ¿Por cuánto tiempo estarán aquí los, eh, los pimientos eh, ahumándose? Bueno, pues los pimientos están aquí entre 8 y 10 días, en los cuales se los da la vuelta diariamente. Uh -huh. um, I just asked him for how long the pepper stay here, and he said between around 8 to 10 days, and every day have to move to keep drying in the same level. ¿Cuántos kilos de pimiento tenemos aquí? Pues pimiento ahora mismo aquí es eh, variedad bola, uh -huh. que es la variedad dulce, pimentón dulce. Y hay unos 5.500 kilos, más o menos, de, de, pimiento, de fresco. pimiento fresco. Esto luego se queda más o menos en 800, 900 kilos. With this process, with the smoking the, the peppers, the, the thing we are giving to the, pro, the final products is flavor, aroma, and the color will keep here like that forever. Beautiful and bright. Once the pepper are dry, they are taken to the factory where they remove all the dirtiness. It's needed a few mil to get the proper texture. It must be an intense red color and a consistent powder.
Eva, ¿cuál es el proceso más importante de la molienda? Pues utilizar piedras, como así marca el consejo regulador y mantener la temperatura constante. As Eva said, the most important thing in the whole process is to keep the temperature under control and always use the stone as the denomination of origin safe. Once it's mill is keep in a small tin like this, which is the best way to preserve the pimenton. As we have seen, the entire process is natural, almost like the old days. It's a unique product with the PDO, where only 17 companies take part. Dear friends, I'm here in Jarandilla de la Vera, in the Parador de Turismo, and today I'm going to be cooking for you a very simple, very, very yummy recipe. It's going to be pan fried chicken with patatas revolconas, that is nothing else than a beautiful potatoes, boiled potatoes with olive oil and pimenton de la Vera. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, with some olive oil, of course, extra virgin olive oil, yeah, like that. We are gonna infuse some garlic. One, two, three, and four. And the thing we are going to do is very simple. With your hands like that, smash a little bit, huh? and straight to the oil. What happened? With the oil, cooking slowly, and some bay leaf, thing we are gonna do is just infuse the oil with these flavors, as simple as that. Will take, I will say, around 20 minutes, a very, very low heat. Just, uh, I can, as you can imagine, the oily oil just heating up is giving, is giving me a beautiful aroma. Simple as that, and we are gonna keep it there for around 20 to 25 minutes. And we have here the olive oil, already being infused, mm? and it's the one we are gonna use to fry the chicken. Plenty of oil, as you know. When you do this recipe, recipe you will find how the aroma from the garlic and the bay leaf came into you. You see, plenty of oil, like that, and then the chicken. The chicken is a chicken leg, but the thing with it, it was just um, the bone. Very easy, like that. And now we are gonna add some salt and some white pepper. And very important thing we are gonna do, we are gonna fry the chicken with the skin down, like that. Huh? Why? Because we are looking for a lovely, golden, crispy skin that is full of flavors. And we are gonna leave like that for around 10 minutes. And now, after around 10 minutes, you will get this gorgeous skin. Crispy and full of flavor. The flavor, the taste from the garlic and the bay leaf. And the thing we are going to do now is just turn over in the hot oil. And we are going to leave there for around another 5 minutes. And it's going to be ready to make the sauce. For the sauce, main ingredient is the pimenton de la vera. In this case, it's one of my favorite one, it's hot. That means it's quite spicy. Oil, the oil is hot, and the pimenton is straight to the oil. But very important thing you need to know is you have to cut the coction, the cooking. With that, we are going to use some white wine, straight to the pan. And then, Move well and back to the heat. One thing that you really need to know is uh, when you are cooking with pimenton de la vera and you add straight to the oil, you have to put something to cut the coction straight away. 
Why? Because uh, from a gorgeous smoky flavor will go to a bitter if get burned. Remember, very important thing to do, cook the pimenton only for 10 seconds if the oil is very hot. And now we are going to leave in the sauce for around 3-4 minutes just to leave the alcohol to evaporate. And after around 5 minutes the alcohol will go, it's going to be out and the aroma coming through is just spectacular, it's terrific. And we are ready for plating. And for that, like we said before, we are going to use as a garnish some patata revolcona. Then it's potatoes, boiled potatoes, and mash, crush it really, with some olive oil and pimentón de la vera. Ready? We are going to take the chicken. Very simple way, with the skip up. Like that. Mm. We are going to reserve the liquid. And for garnish, we are going to use as well the garlic bean confit in the oil. Some bay leaf. As well. Give it some high. Some of the sauce. Look at the beautiful color. It's not just splendid. And just put all over the chicken and the potatoes. Something around there and some, just a little bit more from this oil had been infused with the garlic and bay leaf. And why not some of this beauty? Parsley. We love parsley in Spain. And finish with some gorgeous white pepper. And there you have a pan fried chicken with patatas revolconas and a stunning sauce made with pimentón de la vera. Enjoy. And we are going to be cooking now a very simple but really yummy recipe. That is a chickpea soup. Here we have some chickpeas with some onions and garlic. And then we are going to finish with really lovely white prawn from south of Spain. And first things first is, as you know, and very important for the Spanish gastronomy, is the extra virgin olive oil. Like that. And now, when the oil is hot, we are going to add some red onions. Like that. My favorite sound, the sizzling of the food in a very hot oil. Mm. Mm. And we are going to leave here to cook for around two, three to five minutes. As you can see now, the onions are nice and soft. We are going to add the garlic. Only a couple of cloves. Finally sliced. Straight to there. And then just move well and keep cooking for another two to three minutes. With the garlic, it's already cooked. We are going to add some chickpeas. The chickpeas already cooked. Yeah. We are going to saute a little bit. And then we are going to add a chicken stock. 
very important in this recipe that the stock have to be really lovely and um, full of flavors. Like that. We are going to cover the chickpeas. We are going to add some salt and some pepper. A little bit more salt. And I think we'll need just a bit more stock. We are going to move well. And then we are going to keep um, boiling for around 10 minutes to take all the flavors. And then we are going to just blend. After 10 minutes, bubbling out with the chickpeas, the onions, the garlic, and the stock all together, we just blend very, very well. And we are looking for a texture like this one. Look at that, really lovely and silky. Mm? Mm. Really good. And now we are going to put some oil in a hot pan. Like this, a little bit. And with the oil is just um, warming up, we are going to add a little bit of pimentón de la vega. In this case, we are using, using bittersweet. It's the one I really love. Like that. We are going to move well. We are making like a kind of uh, pimentón de la vera oil. Like this. And we are going to add some prawns. These prawns are white prawns from Huelva, one of my favorites. We're just heating up a little bit. Sing well the prawns with the pimentón oil. We don't want to cook the prawns. We just want to heat the oil with the pimenton and just giving some heat to the prawns. Like that. Really gorgeous. And we are ready for plating. And it's ready to it. We are going to finish with some piece of mint. From here. And you have a really lovely cream, chickpea cream with prawns and pimentón de la vera. In this case, we've been using bittersweet. I'm going to be cooking for you today. This beauty is Solomillo Iberico. It's uh, Iberico pork tenderloin. And thing we are going to do is uh, we are going to seal very, very well, and then we are going to marinate with few spices. Pimentón de la Vera, in this case, is sweet. Some cumin, seed and already ground, and some white and black pepper some garlic, olive oil, and a little bit of wine. First thing first, olive oil in the pan, like that. And we are going to put some salt in the pork, and some pepper all over. And now, when the oil is very hot, we are going to put the tenderloin, the very pork tenderloin. And the thing we are going to do is where we are going to seal the whole loin. Why? Because we are going to keep all the juices inside. And then, when we marinate, all the crust will take a really, really lovely flavor. But the most important thing now is seal all the tenderloin very, very, very well. And now, as you can see, all the tenderloin is lovely, nice and gold, lovely crispy. Yeah? We are going to start doing the marinade. For that, we are going to use some uh, bay leaf 
couple of bay leaves, some garlic, chopped garlic, cumin. We are gonna put powder and some seeds as well. Like some pimentón de la vera. In this case is sweet. Uh, um, some white wine. Like that. Let's keep moving a little bit like this. Some olive oil. Like that. And we are gonna mix all very well together. Look the color of this with the sun. It's not just beautiful. This is when we are talking about memories. This is coming old memories to me. When you are young, when your mom and your grandmother is cooking, using very, very Spanish spices, the aroma, the smoky aroma from the pimenton, that is all about memories. Now, when the tenderloin is nice, like we see, Lovely and cook straight to the marinade. Yeah? And we are going to keep in the marinade for around 24 hours. And um, all the time that you remember, just keep it moving. And we are going to put some clean film on top to uh, stop getting dry. And after 24 hours, than the tenderloin being marinated, we are going to slice and it's ready for plating. As you can see, this pork, when it's very cold, you can really uh, eat not very well cooked. Even here it's uh, medium rare. And we are going to start just plating. Very simple, nothing fancy. One more, why not? Like that. And now we are going to slice some of the orejones. This is a really lovely, easy, cold. It's like a really like a carpaccio. We are going to add um, now some of the marinade top. Yeah. And then we are going to add some of the dry apricot. We are going to give some sweetness to the dish because everything is really earthy or really proper flavors. But this one is the, with the sweetness, is cutting through the whole fatty thing. Yeah. Gorgeous. Some flake almonds as well. And something I just saw here on my table from the garden here at the El Parador in Jarandilla de la Vera. Yeah. Can't be more fresh than this. It's beautiful. And some salt. Some dry oregano. And here we have a really lovely cool starter that is marinated for tenderloin with a dry apricot, almonds and pomegranate. And I want to show you my favorite salad and the simple salad ever. It's only tomatoes, pimentón de la vera, in this case I'm using bittersweet, olive oil, 
and some sliced onions. And why not? We are gonna put some of this oregano from the area, local and beautiful. And uh, simple as I gonna slice some tomatoes. Like that. Just in the middle of the plate. This one I'm gonna just chop like that to get just some different forms. Mm. One tomato, pimentón, like this. We are gonna add some uh, red onion, just here in the middle. We slice, very finely slice, and then we keep in water with some uh, uh, ice. That will make the onion really, really, really nice and sweet. And now, some salt. Some black pepper. Nice olive oil. Plenty of olive oil. Why plenty? Because now, we are mixing the pimentón de la vera with the black pepper. And you will see later now how we are making a lovely, lovely sauce. Uh, and oregano. And like we say, the more simple but yummy salad, tomato salad with red onion and pimentón de la vera. In this case, we use bittersweet. I want to show you a very simple sauce, but going very well with anything you want to use. This is called ajada. The ajada, the originals are from Galicia, and they were used normally with the fish. But I want to show you how versatile it is. You can use with fish, that you using over there. You can use with meat, grilled meat, vegetables, with potatoes, with anything you want. And even I, something I love is with cauliflower, Boil cauliflower as simple as ajada on top and you are going to be very, very happy. And first thing first, olive oil, heating in a pan and plenty of garlic. Like that, very fine chop, slice, sorry. As you know, garlic is, uh, is well one of the base of the Spanish cuisine. Garlic straight to the hot oil. And then we are gonna just keep frying until it's changing color from the lovely white until the brown. Because the garlic, it's different way to make ajada. Some of them use uh, um, garlic, in this case, always pimentón de la vera. Uh, they use fish stock, but my favorite one and more versatile is a simple of olive oil, garlic, Pimentón de la Vera, and a very important thing as well, vinagre de Jerez, sherry vinegar. You can see, garlic, keep cooking nice and slowly, bubbling. The smell, I can say, is just unbelievable. A little bit longer. Like that. Now, the garlic been cooking for around two, three to five minutes. Already changing color. Mm. We are gonna take it out from the heat. This is very important. Like that, out the heat. We are gonna add the main ingredient, that is pimentón de la vera. And in this case, we are using a spicy, hot pimentón de la vera. Like that. Straight to the oil, moving well. Very important thing when you are doing, when you are cooking with pimentón, never overcook. If the pimentón get burned, will get bitter, and we don't want that. Here is cooking a little bit with the hot oil. The pimentón, hot pimentón here. 
We are going to add vinagre de Jerez, sherry vinegar. Like that. Yeah, cook a little bit. And now it's ready. We just cook a little bit the vinegar. And we are going to serve today with trout, very popular in this area, and some roast potatoes. Then one more. And voila, it is. pan fried trout with roast potatoes and ajada. I think one of the most popular cheeses here in La Vera is the goat cheese that has been cured with pimentón de La Vera. But something I love as well is just fresh goat cheese and then finish with some pimenton. In this case, I, I will use the more traditional one than is the bittersweet. And it just slice some of the cheeses straight to the plate. One more. White knot. And then just um, some pimenton. And again, plenty of olive oil. A bit more. And some oregano. Very simple, but I'm telling you, full of flavor is a um, fresh goat cheese here from La Vera with some pimenton. In this case, we use bittersweet and finish with some dry oregano.